Namam Isvaram Satchud Anandarupam Lasat Kundalango Kule Rajamanam Yashoda Biolukalat Davamanam Param Mistam Ajanta to Drutya Gopya Rudantam Nature Yugmam Rijantam Karam Boja Yugmena Satam Kanetram Muhu Swasa Kampa Chire Kanka Kanta Stitta Grivam Damo Dadam Bhakti Badam Iti Drik Sali Labir Ananda Kunde Swagosham Nimajantam Akya Payantam Hari Sita Gresu Bhakta Jitatam Puna prema tastam shata vritti vande Vadam deva moksham na moksha vadimba na chanyam vrneham vare sarapiha Iram teva purnata gopalabalam Sada me manyasya virastam kimanyai. Iram te mukam bojam achantanilai. Vritam kuntalai snigta raktais chagopya. Muhushumbitam bimba rakta darang me. Manas yavirastam alam lakshalabhai. Namo deva damoda ananta vishnu. Proceed a probo dukkha jalabdi magnam. Proceed a probo dukkha jalabdi magnam. Kripa Dristi Vrishyati Dinam Bhattanu. Kripa Dristi Vrishyati Dinam Bhattanu. Griha Nesha Mam Agyam Adyaksha Drishya. Kuvar Atma Jau Bhatta Murchaiva Yadvat. Twaya mochi to bhakti bhajal kritao cha. Tata prema bhaktim swakam me priyacha. Namokshe graho mesti damo dareha. Namaste studamne spura dipti damne. Twadi odarayata vishvasya dhamne. Namo radikayai twadi apriyai. Namo nanta lilaya devaya tubyam. Namo radikayai twadi apriyai. Namo Nanta Lilaya Devaya Tubyam. Namo Radhikaya Twadi Apriya. Namo Nanta Lilaya Devaya Tubyam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ramo
Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare. Om again, a chimidandasya again, and janashalakaya, chakshun militangena, tasmai, Sri Gurave Nama. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda, Sri Advaita Gradha, Sri Vas. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're having our question and answer session. I would like to report an interesting incident that I encountered today. My ears were clogged. And for the first time that I can remember, I went to have the wax sucked out of my ears. And I was shocked afterwards. The difference was like night and day. Suddenly, I was much more sensitive to sounds around me. I was like experiencing a different audio reality. Just think, not only do we need our ears de-waxed in order to hear, but we also need to chant without offenses, which will bring about a completely different experience of bhakti. So this experience with physical hearing and physical impediments to hearing made me think about how the more spiritually advanced we become, the more our experience of hearing the Hare Krishna mantra changes, the more we become free of all the gook that's gumming up our consciousness, interfering with our ability to hear the Hare Krishna mantra. The more that the spiritual reality becomes known to us. As the often quoted verse says, Ata Sri Krishna Namadi Nabhaved Gayam Indraya Sevan Mukhi Jivadao Swayam Eva Sparachyada. Devotional service begins with the tongue. Namadi. First, we focus on the name. And then Adi, all else follows, form, qualities, pastimes. It's all one package. The reality, the spiritual reality is that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is non-different 
from his name and his deity form. So as we advance in bhakti, we realize more and more those three things. And of course, advancing in bhakti means to become more sensitive to Krishna's presence everywhere. You can begin very simply by chanting Hare Krishna, of course. And every time you drink some water, you think, Russell Humbap Sukhontea, Krishna's the taste in water. Krishna's the original fragrance of the earth. Prabhashmi, Shashi Suryo. He's the light of the sun and the moon. These are Krishna's instructions for how to see him. All that is possible to a magnified degree when we aspire for hearing the Hare Krishna mantra properly. Just like in relationships. You want to be there for the other person and you want to hear the other person and you want the other person to hear you. At least things start out that way. And... <laughs> <laughs> I see Gopinath and Dina they all are laughing <laughs> yes you want to be heard and the other person to hear you as I often point out we should give that same kind of quality aspiration to chanting Hare Krishna. As we had become older in spiritual life, we realize that our main problem, our number one problem is we're not hearing the Hare Krishna mantra. That starts to become realized by you. But in the beginning... So many complexities seem to predominate, whether traumas from the past or misunderstandings from the present or political and economic intricacies, world situation, my physical situation, my mental situation physical and mental situations of those around me. Yes, we have to deal with all that in a responsible way. All while understanding that our main problem is our ears are clogged with wax. <laughs> Not simply the physical ears, but the spiritual ears. Because bhakti is meant for the spiritual senses. The material senses are just a covering, but we're so dedicated to those material senses that cover our spiritual senses. So these were some of my realizations upon having my ears clean today. I went to a place recommended by Dr. Nalini Kantadas. And it turned out that the ear nurse who was going to suck out the wax from my ears was the mother of a devotee, Madhu Mangal. So I told her I was honored to be to have my wax sucked out of my ears by such a mother. <laughs> And she told me she had been doing this for 40 years. So I asked her, what did people do before this technology for sucking the wax out of the ears? What did they do? So well, maybe they use syringes or something clumsy like that. You ever wonder what the world was like before they were dentists? Did you know that before the middle 
around the middle of the 19th century, there were no dentists and no psychologists. <laughs> people, how did people survive? <laughs> All right, who has the first question? I see the Bhakti Lounge hand is up. Hi, Krishna Guruji. Yes. Um, I had a question about Dhruva Maharaj. So when I'm I was reading the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj. I was wondering that Dhruva Maharaj was lamenting when Lord Vishnu came to him to give him darshan and grant him the benediction for Dhruva Loka. Um, and he also gave him the opportunity to rule, to rule the world for 36,000 years. But I feel like if I ever get this benediction, um, I'd be very happy. And, but Dhruva Maharaj- You want to rule the world? <laughs> <laughs> like he was because he was also given the opportunity that after you rule the world then you go back to god so you want to rule the world first <laughs> no, then... just in, just um we want an easy life so so it was a very it was a win-win situation for him why was he remorseful because nothing compares to pure bhakti not even ruling the world for 35,000 years. There's no comparison. But because you think there's a comparison, therefore you're wondering, well, uh, hmm, why doesn't he take both? <laughs> there is no comparison. And that's something we need to realize as we progress in bhakti. Just the fact that we can render some service with increasingly pure motivation has no comparison to any benediction in the material world. Mystic powers, wealth, beauty, fame, nothing compares to a single act of pure devotion to Krishna. So by your reading about Dhruva Maharaj, you're becoming purified. You're asking the question, well, wait a minute now. Well, why did he just be happy with both? He's got Krishna, he's got the money too. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya came to give us the highest standard of bhakti. Ramya kachchat upasana vajavadu bhagena yat kalpita. There's no better method of loving Krishna than that demonstrated by the gopis of Vrindavan. Who at any moment would sacrifice anything and everything for Krishna's pleasure. The residents of Vrindavan in general don't care to know whether Krishna is the supreme or not. They just love him. And Krishna loves that. He loves that spontaneous love. Free of awe and reverence and official hymns. I often point out, and you may remember, you might think it's very nice to be constantly praised. Oh, Chitta Mohini, you are so great. Oh, everything you do is so wonderful. At first, you would think, oh, yeah, this is great. At last, people have awakened. <laughs> they finally understood. But after a while, you'll see it gets boring. You just want to have some spontaneous fun. <laughs> Krishna is... the supreme enjoyer, and he knows that better than being worshipped in awe and reverence is to be loved by his 
Rajabasis who have no other reason for loving him than simply Krishna is unlimitedly attractive. He's their everything. They don't calculate. Well, Krishna, since you are the Supreme Personality of God, therefore, <laughs> no calculations, no stipulations. Simply, Krishna, you are everything. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Or RT. Hare Krishna Guru. I have a question about the correlation between devotee care and outreach is if the devotee care is of very high quality does the outreach become more potent it's all related isn't that quite obvious <laughs> it's not that we simply focus on outreach and forget the inreach. <laughs> Otherwise, who's going to be around to do the outreach? <laughs> That's very obvious, isn't it? The two go together. Happy devotees attract persons. Very simple. Anyone else? No one is very inquisitive. Hi, Krishna Guru. Yes, who is it? It's Premila Hari. Yes. Um, I had a question about, um, I guess about time in the spiritual world. It doesn't exist, but I was kind of just wondering what It happened. does exist, but it has no effect. Try to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Just like when Mother Yashoda tries to bind Krishna with rope. How do you get the rope around someone who is beyond space? He has no front or back or end to him. How do you get a rope around him? And he's beyond, he's beyond time. So there's no step one, step two, step three. It's impossible for you to conceive of this because you're Thinking process is conditioned. It's shaped by time and space. But time and space is subordinate to Krishna. So this is what makes the Damodar Leela one of the things that makes it so inconceivably wonderful. How did she bind Krishna? You might think, oh, well, all she did was Take a rope and wrap it around. And what's the big deal? But no, this is an inconceivably extraordinary event because there's no end to Krishna. There's no beginning. Yet out of love for Yashodamaya, he takes a form that allows her to bind him, and that is his original form. So please understand that time and space 
and their restrictions have nothing to do with Krishna Leela. I guess I was I was wondering what happens in Goloka Vrindavan when it's time for Krishna's pastimes to happen in the in the material world. Does it empty out or <laughs> What happens in Goloka Vrindavan goes on along with what's happening in Boma Vrindavan. Devotees are simultaneously present. It's not like <laughs> you're thinking in terms of physical space. You've got to vacate one place to be in another. It's all going on simultaneously. If you want to know more, go there. <laughs> Dinanath, you have a question. wondering um how can um how can Krishna perform amazing pastimes on um um to amaze um the Lord of Vaikuntha because the Lord of Vaikuntha is him. Can you repeat Dina Diala? Um I think this question came for him from another class. So he, when you were speaking about the different uh, spiritual realms and uh, his question is, how is it that uh, Krishna can perform pastimes in Bhumna Vrindavan that amaze and cause wonder in, um, for Lord Vishnu, the Lord of Vaikuntha because He's thinking that they are the same person. So how can Lord Vishnu be amazed at his own past times? <laughs> Krishna as Swayam Bhagavan amazes even his expansion as Lord Narayan. <laughs> That means he's really good at performing pastimes then. <laughs> it means he's really good at performing pastimes then. Yes. Rupa Goswami explains that Krishna has four qualities or attributes that he doesn't share with his expansion, Narayan. His flute playing, his beauty, his being surrounded by the most intimately loving associates and his very special pastimes. So yes, he performs pastimes in his Vrindavan Leela that even the Lord of Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha Nath, is amazed. What do you think? So meditate on this point. <laughs> okay. If I can um, spot in time and I can think about it. Huh? See what did I you say, Dina Dale? I mean, I'm mean, sure. see if I can um, slip in the time where I can think about it. <laughs> so he'll, he'll try to, he'll make some time to think carefully about that. Yes, talk it over with your parents. <laughs> Krishna Kata. <laughs> Make your home successful. Discuss. Why is it? Pita, Gopinath, tell me, why is it that the Lord of Aikunda is amazed by what? Gopinath. Swayam Bhagavan Krishna does. 
even Ooh. Lord even Lord Brahma and Indra become confused, bewildered. This weekend is Govardhan Puja. Sunday, I'm giving class for on the new Varshana Zoom, and I'll probably talk about Indra's coming before Krishna in a contrite way, feeling embarrassed as his having caused such a commotion. So you can prepare for that class by having your parents read to you that chapter from the Krishna book, okay? I've given you homework. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? I, I'm just reading the Zoom names. Kalyani Radha. Looks Hare like Somi Mai, however. Hare Krishna Gurudev. <laughs> yes, this is Somi Mai. And thank you for the opportunity to ask questions. So I was wondering how in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, it explains how Uddhava's service attitude never slackened, even into his old age. And mm. so I'm wondering on top of keeping good association, um, what are some key components that can ensure we can always have a fresh and dynamic service attitude? Well, one thing you have to understand is Uddhava is no ordinary person. <laughs> so we aspire to follow in such footsteps. He's an eternally liberated associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Still, that doesn't give us a reason to be slack. Oh, well, <laughs> it's all far beyond us. So let me sleep and be in ignorance and passion. <laughs> Hearing about Krishna's associates like Uddhava inspires us and purifies us. Just hearing about him purifies us. So yes, we aspire that somehow or other we can always increase our service appetite. As Naratam Das Thakur says, Tandara Chranasevi Bhakta Sanevas, Janame Janame Hoy E Abhilash. Birth after birth, I just want to serve Krishna in the association of devotees. All right, who's next? Speak up. <laughs> Hare Krishna Gurudev. Yes. Um, thank you for this opportunity, Gurudev. Um, based on your advice of at least reading one uh, verse from Srimad Bhagavatam per day, I have been uh, I started with the first canto. And uh, in the Seventh uh, uh, chapter. Um, I'm just uh, passing through the Narada uh, 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 meeting with uh, Srila Vyasade, and when he's describing his um, as to how he came to the path of bhakti, one gets the impression that uh, he was like um, uh, he was on the earthly planet and then got elevated. So uh, my uh, my question is. Uh, isn't Narada Muni um, a Nitya Siddha? And uh, if that is the Narada case, uh, his birth... Is, is Narada Muni is, what? Is he, not, uh, is, is he not a Nitya Siddha? Uh, as in, um, is he not uh, already like uh, uh, always liberated? Or, or was he on the earthly planet and then got liberated? I hope... Uh, He's telling you his story, so you'll be inspired. You're hearing about several lifetimes of Narada Muni in the first canto. Chandidas, is that your hand up? 
Yes, Gerdes. Hi, well, I have a kind of a multifaceted question. Okay. Um, one is about the prediction of the golden age, which is about which is supposed to manifest or is already in progress of manifesting. I'm wondering how that uh, will come about. And then uh, also more practically thinking about the 60s when we had when they had when the Vietnam War was going on and there was uh, a rebellious attitude of the people towards toward, of the young people towards the government. Is there and drawing parallels to today's time? Is there some opportunity in the current climate to take advantage of uh, the people being shaken up from material comforts and uh, spread Krishna consciousness more widely? And and it's okay. Seen... Hold on, hold on, yeah. hold yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. What's the first question? Okay. Uh, the how does the golden age manifest? Through the chanting of Hare Krishna. It's there for those who come under the umbrella. The rainstorm of Kali Yuga will go on. But the golden age means there's a special umbrella amidst the torrent, torrential downpour. For those who go under the umbrella, they're getting the greatest opportunity amidst the havoc of Kali Yuga. So it doesn't mean necessarily that there is a widespread uh, Christian Dawning of the age of Aquarius or something? <laughs> no, that like entire countries become Krishna conscious, filled with devotees, Krishna conscious governments and yes, kind of that, 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 can, that can also happen, yes. Mm -hmm. For those who come under the umbrella, they don't get soaked. But there'll always be those who don't. All right. And then the are there parallels between the 60s Vietnam War kind of protest rebellion and today's time that we can take advantage of to spread Krishna consciousness? Uh, a servant of Lord Chaitanya is always the greatest opportunist. Just like a business person, a real business person, as I often explain knows how to make a profit, whether the price of something, of a commodity is going up or down. So whatever the situation, a servant of Lord Chaitanya is thinking, how do you use this situation for serving Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? In fact, when people are very fallen, the servant of Lord Chaitanya thinks because they're very fallen, therefore it's an even greater opportunity to render service. <laughs> it's reverse thinking, isn't it? Normally you would think, oh, they're very fallen, forget it. But an opportunist Vaishnava thinks, oh, they're very fallen. This is an opportunity to serve Krishna more. <laughs> So whatever you think of the present circumstances, according to your perspective, always see that there's some advantage for engaging people in Krishna's service. Always look for that advantage. Gokulila. Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, my question is about uh, how can we develop um, a better sense of uh, surrender in anticipation of um, some uh, turmoil in our material life and, um, and also be uh, thinking that we are not, the sense of that we are not in control of our destiny, but at the same time taking um, uh, good shelter or right shelter? That's a, you phrase that very in a complex way. I'm trying to understand what you're getting at. <laughs> um, for example, we may uh, anticipate some economic downturn and we 
we might try to um, you know prepare ourselves for this but as we hear from um, the scripture that we ultimately not in control of our destiny so maybe instead of um, trying to prepare and in, in terms of material um, arrangements we, we can just develop a sense of um, surrender and uh, surrender it's space. always good to increase the bhakti there's no doubt about that that's our general policy whether it's so-called boom or bust economic boom or economic bust always think how to increase the bhakti everything in the material world goes up and down Every decade that I've been practicing bhakti since the early 70s, there's a prediction about economic collapse. It happens. It has happened. But my point is every decade there's such a prediction. <laughs> Why not just consider that the material world is always in a state of collapse? <laughs> <laughs> then you've got it down. Then you're then you're properly situated. <laughs> I remember every decade books would come out about the coming depression, <laughs> and devotees would go into a tizzy about it. Back in the time when Shiloh Prabhupada was with us in the seventies in the USA, we were so busy distributing books and expanding Lord Titania's mission, very few of us even noticed or ever noticed that the USA was in an, a severe economic recession because of spending so much money on the foolish Vietnam War. We didn't notice that. We just, we were just Prabhupada had his jacked up beyond <laughs> all these uh, material calculations. We were just going for it because he was going for it. So since then, I've noticed there's always a prediction of world war. There's always a prediction of economic collapse. Uh, these things happen. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> Some or other, I think if you live in New Zealand, you think you're exempt. <laughs> you think you're exempt from the routine workings of material nature. Just like astrologers in India always take credit when they predict something and it finally happens. So every year they make a prediction. There's going to be a collapse. After some years, undoubtedly, there'll be a collapse somewhere, somehow. And then they say, just see, I told you, I told you. <laughs> but they never tell you all the times that it didn't come true. <laughs> it's a good business. <laughs> so just consider that the material world is always in a state of disarray and then you'll be prepared for the reality <laughs> why just wake up to the reality that there's cheating going on there's distress material nature is inflicting miseries i was explaining to someone the other day that Sometimes I notice some of our devotees are like 12 year old girls who suddenly realize there's their parties going on, people are drinking and they're doing all kinds of things. Wow, I never knew. <laughs> wow, can you believe it? Wow, <laughs> there's a party going on right now. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> parties have always been going on people are always dancing and drinking but from time to time 
when someone comes of age, they realize that, hey, I didn't know all this was going on, but it's always been going on. <laughs> Stamba Bhava Das. Hare Krishna Gurudev, this is Gera Garanga. Um, my question is in relation to a video I recently watched about millennials. And basically, in essence, this generation is addicted to instant gratification, from what I understood from this Something video. new that's never happened to any other generation. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, the, the the point was emphasizing that it's even uh, they can't get happiness from long term relationships. Um, more, I guess you could say, mode of goodness happiness. It's more about instant, instant. It's got to be now. I've got to have it, and if I'm not, then I'm feeling depressed. So my question is how how does Bhakti develop uh, deal with this craving for instant gratification and change it. So you had to watch a video to know that this is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a question of how much instant is the instant? <laughs> That's all. It's always been going on. <laughs> Above board, underboard, behind the scenes. <laughs> it reminds you when I was visiting South America. And there's a saying that that deals with the difference between Brazil and Chile. Brazil is not a very religiously conservative country and Chile pretends to be nice, stodgy Catholic country. <laughs> but the difference, it was explained to me, is that in Chile, you, you do your immorality, but you don't tell anyone. In Brazil, you do your immorality and everyone knows about it and you don't care. <laughs> Big difference, huh? <laughs> so how instant is the instant gratification? <laughs> it's just talked about more in the open these days, that's all. Mm. Simply, the media has feasted upon it. And there is media that was not available during the time of, during the youth of your parents or certainly of your grandparents. But that doesn't mean they were not hoping for instant gratification. <laughs> right. Reminds me of a story I often tell. One old lady in New Zealand told me this how when she was 18, her fiance went off to fight in Europe for World War II. That's the way things were back then. You're 18, you, you, had, a, you, you, know, you had a fiance, you married. But before they could marry, he was sent off on a ship to Europe, to Italy to fight. And so she was describing to me when he returned, he had been a prisoner of war until the war ended. And then he's returning on a boat to New Zealand, bringing back all the New Zealand soldiers whose karma took them to Europe to fight and die or survive. So she was at the port in Nelson, she told me, somewhere near Nelson, maybe picked in or something like that. Waiting, her man had returned. And 
So I asked her, well, how did you feel when he walks off? He marches off the ship. How did you feel when you first saw him after three or four years? She said, I can't remember. I just fainted. I can't remember what happened. <laughs> and I said, wow, you know, you were really faithful. You stuck with him, although he was overseas for three or four years. You had no idea whether he's coming back. You had no idea what was happening to him. He's a prisoner of war. And you remain faithful. You didn't look at anyone else. She kind of then, old lady, she gave me a sly Kiwi look and said, well, it was pretty easy to be faithful because there were no other men around. They were all overseas. <laughs> all right. I see. Hamish? Hare Krishna Guru Dave. Um, I was wondering for someone who is new at leading kirtans, what is a way that I can uh, stay in the mood of giving the holy name to, to people? Like how can I be most effective at giving people the mantra and pleasing Krishna rather than giving some mundane performance. Just that you're thinking about this is very good. Kirtan is for Krishna's pleasure. You're trying to please Krishna by the Kirtan. And if Krishna hears that you are chanting nicely, then Krishna from within the heart of the people will influence them. So it's all about reciprocation, teamwork. So I'm glad you're thinking in that way. Kirtan is not primarily a musical performance. Sometimes for outreach, we dress it up a bit, but that's just all tinsel. It's all external. The real purpose of Kirtan is to express pure bhakti. So we should never forget that. That doesn't mean we can't package things so that uh, people can become interested in the externals. So therefore they'll stay put and hear the sound of the Maha Mantra. But we as Devotees, glorifiers of Krishna should not lose sight of what kirtan is about and what is its central dynamic. There's packaging, there's the husk, and then there's the rice inside, the kernel. So we have to know what is what and be intelligent, skillful, and at the same time, dedicated to Krishna's pleasure. When Prabhupada would lead Kirtan, of course, it's out of this world, in Goloka Vrindavan, he would sing the same tune for 30 minutes. Can you imagine any of our Kirtan leaders doing that now? The same tune for 30 minutes? <laughs> That's so not even old school. It's ancient history, isn't it? <laughs> you got to have a change of tunes and that shows your prowess as a kirtan leader wow you jump from this tune to that tune to that tune wow <laughs> but actually <laughs> the kirtan style shula Prabhupada showed and demonstrated was he would sing the same tune oh on and on and on and devotees would go wild because Golokera Prema Dana Harinama Sankirtana. He's bringing the sound vibration from Goloka Vrindavan. So that doesn't mean we can't have Kirtan leaders who have nice musical expression. But 
it does mean that the central dynamic is simply to give pleasure to Krishna. It said that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sashi Thakur would, when he would, and it wasn't often when he would sing kirtan, he would just bang the cartels together. <laughs> Yet everyone knew, everyone who's a devotee would know this is this person that is from the spiritual world but he wouldn't demonstrate any musical prowess. <laughs> that doesn't mean we should have out, have out programs to bang the cartels and it's all transcendental. <laughs> if someone has musical ability, use it in Krishna's service, but understand that Krishna is tasting the bhakti. Whatever skills you have, whatever talents you have, use in Krishna's service for Krishna's pleasure. If you like cows, then take care of cows for Krishna's pleasure. <laughs> if you like managing, then manage for Krishna's pleasure. If you like being a psychological therapist, then do it for Krishna's pleasure. <laughs> and of course, everyone will appreciate if you like to cook and you cook for Krishna's pleasure, you'll be very popular. <laughs> Sayak Basu, you have a good question? And your sound system is up to standard? Yes, my Can I can I go? Uh, my try. question is Guru Maharaj. My question is, uh, in Govardhan's pastime, we read that we see that the pride of Indra will develop. And time uh, and again, we read about through. that. Hare Krishna, it's not coming through clearly. Sorry. Okay. Anyone else? Kalyani Radha Sum. I see Madhupan Leela, yes. Hi, Krishna Kurdev. Um, I was wondering, in uh, Krishna consciousness, we're always trying to expand our service so we can do more and do better. And at the same time, we're always trying to perform services according to our nature. So I was wondering, at what time should we stop doing a service that doesn't seem to be in our nature? Uh, it depends on your realization. What is your motivation? Devotees are at different levels, you know. There are some devotees who engage in devotional service for Krishna's pleasure, and there's some devotees who engage in devotional service the way they want to do it. So as a manager or leader, you have to be expert to recognize the difference. Some devotees serve according to what they wanted to do, and some devotees serve according to what is needed. They're willing to do the needful. It's always going to be like that. As devotees become more purified, they become more concerned with what does Krishna want me to do? For some, that comes quicker than for others. So there's always going to be that mixture. There'll be some devotees who are very self-sacrificial, and there'll be other devotees who are attached to doing things according to what they like. We have to deal with them all. 
we have to encourage them all. At the same time, we always point out what is the, what's the real standard for bhakti? Pleasing Krishna's senses, especially by pleasing Krishna's devotee, because Krishna is very difficult to approach directly. I see Krishna events. Hi Krishna Gurudev. It's Sevya Bhagavan Das. Um, Gurudev, my question is from Chaitanya Charitamrita, conversation between Rupa Goswami and Mahaprabhu. Um, in his teachings, he says, the material desire to enjoy the material world and the desire to become liberated from the material bondage are considered to be two witches and they hunt one like the ghost. And he says they hinder the feeling um, to taste the transcendental bliss. We can understand that material desires can be compared, but how come um, the desire to become liberated from the material bondage also compared to the witch? Um, because there's no service. <laughs> <laughs> there's the witch of material enjoyment and there's the witch of liberation, which has nothing to do with Krishna's service. Therefore, they're both witches <laughs> and they cast a spell. Someone who's smart figures out that material existence is futile and they want liberation from material existence. But where is the service? Devotees would rather go to hell and engage in Krishna's service than be liberated into the impersonal Brahman where there is no service. So understand the exclusive value of devotional service and then you'll see why Chaitanya Charitamrita says there's the witch of material enjoyment and the witch of liberation. Both haunt the conditioned soul. You can feel the witch of material enjoyment haunting your mind. What is our recourse? What's the solution? The witch sometimes seems not to go away or pops up just so unexpectedly, seems to be gone for a while, then there she is casting her spell. We need the mercy of Lord Nityananda. By approaching Lord Chaitanya, we have the opportunity to engage in devotional service and to become free of material desires, we approach Lord Nityananda. Arkabe Nitai Chan, Karunahoi Ve, Samsara Vasnamora, Kabe Hutucha Habe. When will I get the mercy of Lord Nichananda so that my material desires become insignificant? Like if a fly lands on your shoulder, it's there, but it means nothing to you. You just flick it off. So Narutam Das Thakur in his bhajan gives you the sequence. Goranga bolite habe pulaka shari. He says, when, when I chant the name Goranga, Will tears fill my eyes? Upon having properly taken shelter of Lord Chaitanya, I can beg for the mercy of Nichananda to free me from material desires, making them insignificant. Even a tiny amount may still be there, but it's so inconsequential. This is the sequence on the way to Vrindavan on the way to Radha and Krishna. So we especially focus on Lord Nityananda in terms of extinguishing our material desires after we've taken shelter of Goranga Mahaprabhu, who ordered us wherever you go, whomever you meet, teach the science of Krishna.
Believe it or not, bhakti is all about developing love of Krishna. And there are various phases that you go through. You can see a perverted reflection of that in relationships in the material world, in, in the classic old-fashioned sense. Some of you I know, in the early years of your the Husta relationship battled royally <laughs> practically every night. <laughs> the actors are looking at each other. <laughs> Ooh, us? No, never. <laughs> but then when you fired off all your weapons and realize, hey, we're in this for the duration, we might as well you know, appreciate one another. And then, hey, you're not so bad after all. <laughs> you, there's some good things about you. <laughs> so the relationship goes through phases. And then there are the golden years where you're like a well-oiled team, of such a fluid team. <laughs> like in sports where one player passes the ball to the other player without even looking at the other player. You just know on the playing field where the other player is. So that's when family life really starts to click. Yeah, this is what it's all about. <laughs> but then as Rasayatra was telling me, but according to the Vedic plan, when you're finally, we've got it finally all worked out, and you're 50 years old, you're supposed to retire. <laughs> <laughs> that's the time when you should be staying together more than ever but the Vedic system says okay <laughs> time to slacken the whole bond <laughs> of course if the relationship is focused on Krishna's service that's something else <laughs> Everyone breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> okay, I see the Bhakti Lounge Zoom account. Hi, Gashangarvid. You again? <laughs> Is that okay? Well, let me make sure that someone else is not being denied an opportunity. Is there someone in Hamish's Zoom who hasn't spoken before? Is that Krishna Gopina? Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Uh, I, I was wondering in the beginning of your the question answer session, you said as you advance, we become less caught up in all the so called problems you may have. And uh, the main problem is that we can't hear the, the main problem we see is that we can't hear the Hare Krishna mantra. So I was wondering in the beginning, how is it possible to, how is it possible to get more realization of that? That, this, that our main problem is we can't hear the Hare Krishna mantra. By hearing this and discussing it again and again, you've only just begun. You never hear it enough. Don't think that we're so great that by hearing something one time, it all clicks and that's it for us. We're living in an ocean of forgetfulness. Maya means forgetfulness. Every day we need to focus on what is our mission? What are we trying to do and why? Material energy takes no holidays. <laughs> so we cannot take a holiday from our hearing about Krishna, understanding Krishna, chanting Hare Krishna, engaging in Krishna's service. So make that your methodology. Your method is daily immunizing yourself, daily 
vaccinating yourself every day of vaccination through hearing and chanting about Krishna. All right. Alex. Hare Krishna Guru Dave. Um, Shamanga here. I, I wanted to know um, when we are. You haven't changed your name on your Zoom account, so I just read what's there. I wanted to know when we're out and about, say, and we find people that are curious about the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and we're able to teach them the mantra. Uh, what, how much advice should we give on the time, duration to chant, um, and how much to disclose about the mantra? That depends on the person. And just by your reaching out, you'll develop a sixth sense, shall we say, for how far to go and how much time to spend. You have to start somewhere in talking about the Hare Krishna mantra. You don't discuss the intimate glories of Krishna and his name. You don't try to explain Krishna is not different from his name. And the name brings to you the form qualities and pastimes. Nah, you don't get into all that. You can tell them that chanting Hare Krishna extinguishes the blazing fire material existence, cleanses the consciousness of the bodily conception of life. So there is no formula. Everything is personal. You have to judge the situation. Sometimes you'll think as you practice, as you try, as you reach out, sometimes you'll think you said too much and sometimes you'll think I said too little. But the main thing is you're trying. To follow Lord Chaitanya's order, which is wherever you go, whomever you meet, teach the science of Krishna. The Bhakti Lounge hand is up. Oh, you, you, you again. Who hasn't asked a question? Ah, do I see Anna? Yes. Hello, Krishna Maharaj. I have a question about the stage of anarchy routine. And, uh -oh. and the desire. Your sound is, uh, let's see if we can get your sound together. Um, yeah, sure. Internet connection is not the best. Again. Okay. Uh, try again. Uh, my question is, uh, can you hear me, Maharaj, now? Okay. Uh, is it possible to focus too much on our anarthas and the desire to get rid of them? And maybe it can um, take away the attention from proper sadhana service and advancement in sp spiritual life. And I just wanted to ask, what is the right balance, if it makes sense? Um, how much we should intentionally focus on anarthas or 100% attention should go to service and practice? Both go on simultaneously. It's not that we're always just staring at our navels, you know, oh, me, oh my, I'm so fallen. <laughs> it's not that you understand this term, it's English term, navel gazing. You know what a navel is, yes? Yes? Yes, Maharaj, yes. Okay, so just imagine someone's always looking down, staring at their own navel. Oh, who am I? What am I? 
Why am I doing this? <laughs> we're self analytical in bhakti and at the same time we're activists so both go on together not that we focus so much on our problems and don't engage in devotional service by engaging in devotional service you get to see your anartas. And by engaging in devotional service, you become purified of your anartas. So it all works together. Whole package. Not that I'm just doing devotional service so I don't have to worry about any of my errors or any of my shortcomings. And on the other hand, oh, I have so many faults. I think about them all day and night. What's your service? I can't do any service. I'm just trying to work on myself and get rid of my faults. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Rachel, you have a question. Or is it Maya poor Leela? Yeah, Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Uh, I have a question that uh, uh, it is said that if a, if a new person uh, hasn't find a, a spiritual master, uh, he or she uh, need to uh, take shelter to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, but uh, uh, how, how to do that practically? Thank you. Read his books. They can't do it physically, but they can read his books. His physical presence is not there, but he's there as his books, which he said is better than his physical presence. So you are reading the books? Yes, yes. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Uh, You've been recommended for initiation, so we have to arrange a how this will happen. You're in China. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have to arrange something. Thank you, Gurudev. Just letting you know I'm aware of this. I remember during one of my visits to China and I had just met Mayapur Leela and I was staying at a hotel nearby where the devotees were staying. And it was 10.30 at night and I hear this pounding on the hotel door. <laughs> I was like, I said, who's banging on my door at 10.30 at night? I said, who is it? Who is it? And I heard this lady's voice. I said, oh, my God, what's going on here? <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> I wasn't going to open the door. <laughs> so the next morning. I said to the devotee, some lady was pounding on my hotel room door at 1030 at night. And ooh. <laughs> there I am all alone. <laughs> and then I found out it was my poor Leela. <laughs> I forgot. What is it that you wanted? I forgot. <laughs> uh, give something to you. Uh, maybe he wanted to give something to me. Yeah. Yes. She was innocent. <laughs> she wanted to give me something before she left. <laughs> and 10.30 at night? What's the big deal? You know? 
everyone's always up to 11 30 at least <laughs> oh, it's global in china <laughs> Yes. Life in China. You know the Maha Mantra for China, yes? Uh, which one? Maha Mantra. The Maya Mantra for China. Uh, work, work by EC. Work, buy, consume, die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she's thinking it's just 10 30 at night. No one goes to sleep before midnight. <laughs> so she very devotedly wanted to give me something before she left. <laughs> so I always remember that. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I was terrified. Here I am in a, a hotel alone all by myself, and there's a lady pounding on the door at 10 30 at night. Oh, Krishna, <laughs> what am I going to do? Is the door locked? Does she have a key? Oh, no. <laughs> All the adventures of traveling and preaching. <laughs> it's funny indeed. All right. Nitai, you have a question? Okay. Let me guess. I forgot what it was. He's waiting. You forgot. Okay. Uh, why? Why does the peacocks peacocks like Krishna so much? Why do peacocks like Krishna so much? In Vrindavan, Krishna is the center for every creature. Not simply peacocks, but the deer, the bumblebees, the birds, the trees. Everyone and everything is attracted to Krishna. Don't you want to go there? So ask your mother and father to teach you how to go there. Okay. Thank you. I thank you. <laughs> Kastorika. Hare Krishna Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. I have a question about the tenth offense. It is said. Uh, Chanting without faith is, uh, and maintaining material attachments is an offense. So how do we develop faith in the holy name? And how do we go from Namaprat to Namabhas? By doing just what you say, by being aware that this is an offense that I want to get rid of. If you didn't care, you wouldn't be aware. But the fact that you're aware means that you are starting to care. That's a great breakthrough. Bhakti is progressive, you know. It's not that you press, and press a button and instantly everything happens. That's why the Acharyas lay out the whole system of progress. So I'm glad that you're concerned with the 10th offense. Are you still in Vrindavan? Yes, Gurudev. Everyone is trying to get to Vrindavan and you're trying to get out. <laughs> That's what Daivi Shakti Mataji says. Everyone is hankering. When will I go to Vrindavan? And here you are in Vrindavan. When can I leave? <laughs> Krishna has you trapped in Vrindavan. What great fortune. Materially, it doesn't look like that, but spiritually, oh my goodness.
The years will go by very quickly. And your experiences in Vrindavan will be unforgettable. For some reason, Krishna has you there and won't let you go. <laughs> All right. I see the Bhakti Lounge hand up. Oh, it's Chitta Mohini again. <laughs> Gurudev Noemi had a question. Okay. Uh, she's asking from Premadhari's account. All right. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Uh, I was wondering, how can we chant from the heart? Srila Prabhupada gives the example of a child calling for mother. So, I don't know if there are any young children in your area, but... Nitai, do you still call out for your mother? Or you're a big boy now? Let's go call. Um, sometimes when I don't know where, you, where my mom and dad are, when they like want to play with them or something. So you cry out to your mother, yes? but not like when you were three years old, right? When you were three years old, you would scream, mother, mother. <laughs> or would you say mata? What would you say? Or mom? Um, what? Mom. Mom. So you hear, there you have an example, Nomi. Mom, <laughs> dependency. Now he thinks he's old and he's independent. But before, his only hope was his mother's attention. So we should chant with that kind of attitude, like a child calling for mother. Dependency, the feeling that there's no other solution. Just like when Nitai or Dinanath would call out for mother, they knew there is no other solution. <laughs> Therefore, it came from the heart. This is why understanding the science of Krishna is very important. We need to be convinced that there is no other solution. What do you think, Nomi? Um, thank you. You're a new devotee, so gradually you'll realize these things as your service appetite increases then your relationship with krishna will start to unfold as his servant especially as the servant of sri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu as srila bhakti no Thakur explains through servitorship to garanga mahaprabhu then you have access to Radha Krishna, otherwise extremely difficult, practically impossible. The Dasya Bhava, the Bhava of servitude to Lord Chaitanya is the gateway even to the Madhurya of Radha and Krishna. So the more that you immerse yourself in the service of Lord Chaitanya, 
the more you'll find yourself at the, the feet of Radha and Krishna. The verse by Prabodhananda Saraswati very beautifully describes. The best and possible way of becoming attached to Radha and Krishna is by service to Garanga Mahaprabhu. And it's amazing by serving Lord Chaitanya, you find yourself attracted to Radha and Krishna. So on that note, all right, Kalab has his hand up. Is that you, Kalab? You've never asked a question before, so we're going to <laughs> delay our exit just because of you. Uh, Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Um, after, the, after the walk yesterday, uh, oh, not yesterday, the other day, we, at the beach, we, a lady came up to me and said, I, are you Hare Krishnas? Uh, did, why, why are you wearing masks? I saw some of you at the protest the other day. I thought you guys were on our side, kind of. Basically, the gist was that she, well, she didn't really want to answer or reply. She just wanted to say, I thought you, you, you fooled me. I thought you were on our side. Of, like, so why, why do people, um, my question is, why do people so quickly jump to conspiracy theories and create this divide in society? Good question. <laughs> you should tell her. Good question. The main conspiracy is done by the illusory energy. The two witches that we heard about earlier, the witch of material enjoyment and the witch of liberation. Of course, the witch of liberation doesn't have much to do these days because everyone's under the spell of the witch of material enjoyment. <laughs> you know, devotees are private citizens, you know, and I guess they've got a lot of time on their hands. And so what can I say, you know, we can't force devotees don't participate in this protest, can't do that. They're expressing themselves as private citizens. I would just say that they've obviously got a lot of energy and time, and uh, <laughs> it most likely could be better engaged, or very likely that it could that time and energy could be better engaged at getting to the root of the problem. So therefore, again, that lady would ask me, why is this? I would say, that's a very good question. <laughs> There's only so much energy we have, so much time. Political solutions will not suffice. Okay, sometimes the argument is that, well, we're chanting the holy name, that people get to hear the holy name. That's true, but they'll also associate you with a particular political cause. And we have to be careful about that. Okay. Thank you, Gurudev. Unless the issue is very clear and ve very obvious that it's favorable for Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan mission, we are quite careful not to be aligned with just this issue or that issue. We're opportunists. If something is favorable to be to align with, and it's not controversial. We can do that still with great care.
But, you know, politics is like a dragon with a tail. You know about the tail of a dragon? Sometimes the tail snaps this way, like a gator. Sometimes the tail of the gator snaps this way, and sometimes it snaps that way. So when it snaps one way, and you're identifying with that, okay, <laughs> this is where the gator's tail is. It's snapping to the left. Okay. But you forgot the gator's tail can also snap the other way, and then you're caught off guard. I was discussing with one of my God brothers, uh, Naranjan Swami, His Holiness Naranjan Swami, about something that happened in Belarus a couple of years ago. There were huge pro democracy demonstrations throughout the dictator. And it's, there's no doubt it's, Belarus is ruled by a dictator, everyone knows. It's just a question of whether you're going to play play his game or not. But it's not a controversy. He'll be the first to admit what I say is the way and the only way. <laughs> so when it came time for the demonstrations, the uprisings, some devotees wanted to take part. So Naranjan Swami wrote them a long letter saying, you can't do this because you don't know where this political train is going to uh, end up. Mm. As, and as far as our bhakti activities, this dictator doesn't obstruct that. We do Harinam. Uh, he doesn't obstruct that. So here you are wanting to take part in political demonstrations, but you don't know how this whole movement the pro-democracy movement is going to turn out. You can argue that, well, we'll do Harinam amid the pro-democracy demonstrations. But you don't know which way the dragon's tail is going to snap next or the gator's tail. You know, the ga gator, these big gators they have in Australia, they can knock you down with just the way they move their tail and catch you totally off guard. So we don't want to be caught off guard by taking sides in such controversies, unless it's very clear in terms of being aligned with our principles and favorable for our outreach. Whereas certainly in Belarus, it was clearly unfavorable because you could and indeed it happened, the pro-democracy demonstrations, which were so vibrant and massive, they failed, they fizzled out. So just think what would have happened to the devotees if they became known as being on the wrong side when the gator's tail snaps the other way. So this takes maturity and it takes leadership and intelligence to calculate. I know in cricket, the batter swings at every pitch. In American baseball, you don't swing at every pitch. <laughs> or as my father would tell me, choose your battles. <laughs> Be very careful. Mm. Still, you can't restrict devotees. They're private citizens. You can appeal. You can try to appeal to their common sense, but sometimes it doesn't work. I'll be the first to tell you it doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> so again, if that lady you met at the beach, did I say it right? Beach. <laughs> <laughs> the lady you met at the beach <laughs> asked me that question. What are they doing? Why are they particip Why are your people participating in this protest? I would say that's a very good question. 
<laughs> what is our position? As Prahlad Maharaj says, Natevidu Swarta Gatim Hi Vishnu Darasaya Ye Bahir Artamanina Anda Yatanda Upaniyamanas Te Pisa Tancham Udu Dhamni Badha. They don't know the goal of life is Vishnu. Therefore, how can there be good leaders? They've taken shelter of the illusory energy and thinking that's valuable. Therefore, the so-called leaders are blind persons leading other blind persons. Everyone is bound up by the cords of material nature, bound tightly. So you can just see this column of blind persons all bound together by cords. And the leader is also bound and blind. They all fall into the ditch, Prahlad Maharaj says. Te pisa tancham uru damni bhada. You can look that verse up in the seventh canto. It begins, Nate vidu swarta getim hi vishnu. So you look in the Sanskrit index of the seventh canto, na, N A T T E. And you'll get it. It's a very famous verse quoted by Srila Prabhupada. All right. I hope that answered your question, Kalib. <laughs> yes, thank you, Gurudev. So we risk political rights. This is democracy. This is a free country. <laughs> No manipulations, no, no economic manipulations, no political manipulations. Everything is above board. It's New Zealand. <laughs> no corruption. <laughs> Just heaps of cow killing. <clears throat> the land of milk and money. <clears throat> and there'll be no reactions for killing so many cows. On the other hand, it's true that Prabhupada, when he came to New Zealand, said it. It is, there's something special because of the rainfall and the lush pastures for cows. So he did say that. That's one aspect. So because devotees have this notion that they're living in a free country, when any slight indication that there could be something suspect going on, they flip out. What is this? Hey, it's whatever intricacies that go on in the material world have always been going on. So again, I give the example of a 12 year old girl just suddenly finding out Things are looking at girls, girls are looking at guys. Wow, I never knew this was going on. <laughs> and then she calls up all her little girlfriends did you know they're parties? <laughs> and, and there was a boy in school. He was looking at me. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Welcome to the material world, even in New Zealand. <laughs> Let us work on our bhakti and help others to do the same. All right. Thank you all very much for your association. Hare Krishna. <laughs>